everyone. Well, I'm certainly feeling more rested this week, so I appreciate your being gracious towards me last week. Um, anyway, today I thought that I would turn the tables a little bit instead of being the student and learning how to uh, how to cook a new meal. I thought that I would share with you something that I'm actually pretty good at. I think that I shared on the very first video that there are actually two dishes that I feel quite confident that I can cook fairly well. And so today I'm going to share one of those with you. And this, act, this is actually Matt's absolute favorite meal in the whole world, and it's charro beans. So uh, for those of you who have never heard of charro beans, maybe you're not in the South, um, it's just Mexican beans, and they're very flavorful. So let me show you what you'll need for this. You'll start with uh, about two and a half pounds of pinto beans, and be real sure that you wash those off. Um, two medium onions chopped, about four medium tomatoes chopped, um, about 10 jalapenos. Now, if you don't like really spicy food, you can use fewer than 10, you know, you, maybe two or three. Um, but we really like spicy food, so I use 10 jalapenos chopped, one bunch of cilantro um, chopped, and then about five cloves of garlic chopped. And then you'll also need some seasoned salt. I use five tablespoons of Johnny's seasoned salt. Um, and then you will need about a, a pound and a half to two pounds of bacon. Now, just a couple of words about this. If you are one, one of those people who don't eat pork, then you probably know better than I do what you'll substitute that with. I'm sure you can use turkey bacon or well, I don't know what else, but you'll probably know. Um, and then as far as the seasoned salt goes, I personally use Johnny's seasoned salt. This is a brand that I discovered when we lived in Oregon, and I just happened upon it one time and used it, and it is absolutely the best. And then we moved to Texas, and I tried to find it in the stores, and I couldn't find it anywhere, and so I bought another brand, probably McCormick's, I don't know, um, and I tried it, and it's just not the same. I, I don't know what, what is so special about this. For one thing, this doesn't have MSG in it, and Matt is very sensitive to MSG, so we really prefer this, but also just the flavor is phenomenal. So we started ordering it online, and so anyway, if you cannot find this in your store, again, it's called Johnny's Season Salt. If you can't find it in your store, then you can get online and order it. I don't see a website on here, but you could just Google Johnny Season Salt and it'll come up. Um, but I highly recommend that because I'm telling you, I, I've tried to make these beans with a different kind of season salt and it's just not the same. So anyway, all that you do is you mix together all of these ingredients. I have an eight quart, an eight quart pot that I mix everything in and it gets really, <laughs> it gets pretty crowded in there because there's a lot of stuff that goes in. So I put my beans and then my onions. Hmm. Somehow all of this will fit. Jalapenos, cilantro, garlic. Those onions are making my eyes burn. And then the tomatoes. I really love to use fresh vegetables in this. And especially these tomatoes. Those tomatoes cook down so nice and just add such an, a wonderful flavor. Um, I really prefer using the fresh vegetables over uh, canned. I'm not a big fan of canned vegetables. Anyway, I'll take my seasoned salt. Again, I use about five tablespoons. Let's put that right down over there. And then fill it just the, to the top with water. And again, I told you that I use bottled water only. I cannot use our tap water. And I'll just fill that all the way to the top. And now over here in a skillet, I have my bacon. And I really like to kind of fry the bacon just a little bit before I put it in. I have tried it before without frying it. And 
I don't know, a bacon, just to me, if it's not cooked a little bit beforehand, it has kind of a spongy taste or it's, it's almost chewy, and I cannot take that. Um, so I just cook it just a little bit, fry it up, just to firm up the texture a little bit. Um, but anyway, while that's cooking, um, I had never even heard of charro beans until we moved into our condo. Uh, I guess it's been about five years ago now. And right up the highway, there is a, a Mexican restaurant. And I mean, it is authentic Mexican food. The buses that come up I-35 from Mexico stop there um, for, for dinner and to transfer buses and stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, anyway, so when we moved here, we discovered this little Mexican restaurant, and Matt is very partial to authentic Mexican food. He's not a big fan of Tex-Mex, which is my favorite. So anyway, we stopped there, and we got charro beans. That was the first time I had ever heard of it. And, I mean, it was so good. And so we just kind of got into this habit uh, if we just wanted something cheap and easy to eat, uh, well, easy to fix, um, I would stop there on my way home, grab some beans and some rice and come home and just put it in bowls and that would be our dinner. And they were so good. Well, we did that for a couple of months and then Matt said, you know, maybe we ought to try to figure out our own recipe. Um, and so we did and it took about probably five batches um, before we really got it down. And I mean, it got to the point where we just started eating our own and then one time uh, after that we decided to go back to the restaurant and order their charro beans and I mean I couldn't even eat them because compared to this recipe it just it it was just it was just not good <laughs> it was not good at all so anyway I mean this is the one thing like I said one thing that I am very confident that I do quite well so I hope that you really enjoy this um, the funny thing too, when I mentioned that you have to rinse your beans, I remember the very first time I made this, I forgot, or actually I just, I had never made beans before, and so I didn't know that you were supposed to rinse the beans first, and I didn't. I just put those suckers right in the pot and put the water in and started cooking them. They were a little gritty, a little gritty. Matt was very gracious and he ate them anyway, but oh man, that was awful. So anyway, I'm going to let this cook just a little bit more. Okay, so now my, my bacon is cooked uh, like I like it. I don't know if you can see this on the camera. I mean, it's not cooked fully. It's not crispy by any means. Um, like I said, it just kind of firms up the texture a little bit so that I'm not chewing into, you know, spongy, chewy bacon, which really turns my stomach. Um, but anyway, so I'm just gonna put this down into the, the eight quart pot here. And notice I am not pouring out the grease. I am pouring that right down in there because that's what gives it the phenomenal um, flavor. And then I'm just going to mix everything up really well, make sure that those spices are all mixed in well. And then I will turn this on. I have it turned on to medium heat. I forgot to get my lid out, but anyway, I'm going to put a lid on this and let it cook for several hours. Um, now with my cookware, uh, again I have Salad Master cookware, and so I put it on medium heat until the little thing starts clicking and then I turn it down to low. Um, and just standard cookware, honestly I don't know, you, you probably know how to use your own cookware and how you cook beans, so um, I'll just leave it up to you to decide what to do. Or I'm sure that you could also make these in a, a crock pot or a slow cooker um, and just leave them cooking on low all day long and then when you get home from work or whatever, then it'll be ready to eat. Um, so that's it. That is it. I mean, the preparation for these is, it, it, it takes quite a while because you've got all the chopping and 
all of that, all of the crying, you know, because of the onions. <laughs> that's really good to me. Um, so I, I'm not going to lie. The preparation takes a while just because of all of that. Um, but then you mix it up real quick and, and just leave it cooking all day. And you got a meal when you come home. So that's it. I'll, let, I'll, I'll come back and show it to you when it's finished. And I like to serve this over rice with just a little bit of cheese on the top. So, and, and I also come back and just stir it every now and then, maybe every hour or so. Uh, just stir it, mix it in, be sure that it's all getting thoroughly mixed up. And that's it. That's my charro beans. Okay, I'm back. And these things have been cooking all day long. I think it's been about um, eight hours and they've just been on the stove top on low. Again, I don't know if you can cook beans like that with all cookware, but you'll know how to cook with your own cookware or with your slow cooker. Um, so anyway, I wish you could smell them. They smell so good. And this is how we serve them here in our house. And this is an entire, an entire meal for us. I mean, we won't have anything else with this meal. I just make some brown rice and then put the beans right over the top and then put a little bit of cheese on top of that and let it melt and it's just so good. Um, I like mine really soupy so I just put more of the liquid in. Matt likes it a little drier. Um, but anyway, I really hope that you'll try it. I do want to make one comment about the seasoned salt that I use. I said to use five tablespoons now, if you happen to use a different brand other than Johnny's that I recommended, then probably start with a little bit less than that um, because it's been my experience that other brands of seasoned salt like McCormick's or something like that is actually a little saltier. Um, and so I don't want you to ruin an entire pot of beans by just, you know, putting all that seasoned salt in there. Um, if you can get your hand on uh, Johnny seasoned salt. I highly recommend it. I really do think that it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, but anyway, I hope that you'll try this recipe. Like I said, this is one of two things that I am confident in making. I really think that I do well. And so if you try it, I'd love to hear what you think about it. And um, if you'd make changes, I'd love to hear what changes you would make. And maybe I'll uh, give those a try because you know, I'm sure that they could be improved upon. Um, but anyway, I hope you try it and let me know. Thanks for hanging out with me.